there's a black Angus farm, like I was saying, and at nighttime, not all the time, we knew the groups of coyotes, we knew where they were, we knew where the dens were, but once in a great while, they would start this frenzy right, right near the driveway, because to the left of the driveway, there was some grass, but then it went down into like a steep area. It was a hill, a steep hill into the woods. They used to hang out right down there. So like maybe 50 yards away, they were really close. Um, they weren't scared of people at all. We had a lot of issues with that. Um, but they would start this crazy yipping and screaming and fighting with each other. And we would record some of it because some of it was just, you could hear other things with it. Thing. Um, to me, it sounded like something bigger. Um, but then you could see, like, if you knew the land, like I was saying, to the left, we had an area and it looped all around. So in front of us now, when we were standing at the back door, we heard the coyotes, they had moved over, they were heading, you could hear the movement. They were heading towards those cows. Um, and every so often, now I can't really tell you what was over there besides the coyotes. I've tried to talk to that farmer, but he was very, very nasty, very mean. Um, we did used to catch him even during daytime hours. Um, he would lay with this like, um, it, it had, it was on like a little tripod. You could see it was a rifle of some sort, all black. I don't know, I, I'm not great with guns. But we would see him in different areas and he would be laying down and we would hear shots. We were used to shots though, trust me, like everybody out there walked around with uh, guns because of the coyotes. So once in a while, you would hear these cows screaming. I think it was more the babies, the calves. You could hear that they were getting torn apart. I can't always say it was coyote, but you could hear the coyotes sometimes there. Um, and we would find a lot of deer. Um, we knew the different herds. We knew where they bedded down. Cause I mean, we were there, we stayed on the land. It was gorgeous, like I said, gorgeous. So we would um, go back in the woods a lot and we would find deer. Um, they weren't shot. Uh, there wasn't any hunting even allowed on that property. Um, you would find them with the neck snapback. Um, but this is too before I still had figured out or known actually and I don't want to just say dog man when I found dog man I found crawlers I found skinwalkers wendigos all that so it wasn't you know then it I was freaked out by them but at that time we didn't really know we yeah. just knew it looked odd nothing it, they weren't eaten they weren't ripped apart um the legs weren't broken um and even if a leg would have gotten broken by one of them, we always look for that because they would have to travel almost from, if they got hit on the road, they would have to travel almost 200 yards to get to the trees. And that's a little bit, that's kind of hard, especially if a leg's broken. But yeah. we would find odd things back there, animals with their necks just snap back. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes the throats were ripped out. I can't always say, like I said, coyote, usually, you knew when they were around, they weren't out like, I didn't hear them every night. It wasn't anything like that. Um, people out there just had guns. I mean, we were, it was basically like a wrong turn area. So, all right. I feel like I'm kind of all over the place. I wish people could Sorry. ask me questions too, because of that um, accident, I came back different. So and, let's, yeah. let's see about uh, maybe tell a story of, of I guess, because you've told me you actually have other Wolfman. I powers. have, I have so many, but I want people to understand. Like from that accident is what I think triggered. Um, I came back different. I stopped going around people. I started when I went out, especially in crowds. Oh, I can feel energy. Like I could, it was blowing my mind that I could look at this lady across the aisle, like down the aisle, and. I could feel what she was feeling and some of it, it was so much, I had to, I couldn't, I just had to stop going out. Um, yeah. I was on a show with another well-known medium. I don't know if I should say her name or not, but she kind of said things too. And she said that I came back different. I feel like I do have a gift. I can't be like, I can't tell you, because sometimes people be like, well, what should I play for the lottery? It doesn't work like that. I picked right. up on feelings from people. Um, 
I do know when something is wrong. That's why my kids would always come to me when we, wherever we would go on the land, they would be like, does it feel right, mom? And I would always tell them, yes, when I got those weird feelings or something that made me think, hmm, that's when I, that's when the activity, like I always could trust myself. Yeah. But um, we, like I said, we would hear the, the cows being ripped apart. Now this is really recent. We just moved here. We haven't even been where we're at now for a year. So right before we moved here, I have, my kids are now basically grown adults. Um, I, the one, my youngest, she uh, came in the one night. It was really late. I knew she was coming home. It was at that same property with all the activity. She was in the house, um, locked up, because that was a big thing. I, we were, we have to lock the doors, have to have the windows locked. Like, don't go outside at night. Don't, don't open the curtains. But um, she was making something to eat and she was going to head to bed. I got woken up by her. And when she woke me up, because my bedroom was right across the hallway from the kitchen, like I could see if she came in the door. She grabbed me and she's like, she was whispering so quietly. I could feel her fear. And that, that made me, I felt fear. This fear was like, almost like life taking. I could feel her fear by her, the way she looked, the way she touched me. She said, something is outside, mom. Do you hear it? And I looked at her because like I said, my, the kitchen and the front door were right out my bedroom door and she, she had the kitchen light on so I could see. I instantly looked at her and I put my lips up to my mouth. She was shaking. I'm shaking because I could feel her fear. And I, I just mouthed, don't talk. I got up and she, she was about to cry. She was holding on to me, telling me not to go. I walked to my bedroom. I shut the door so quietly and I locked it, got back in the bed. She was right up against me. And I told her, do not talk, pray. And she was like, I have to tell you, mom. She's like, didn't you hear it? She heard out there. She said, and this wasn't the first time, but this is, and, and she's not one to be into the whole cryptids or anything like that. She's a teenage girl. She said it was growling down at the shed because we had the shed and the shed was really, it was just an old broken weird shed that was just on the property that my landlord ever took off. Um, just a rundown wooden shed. She said it was this deep, deep growling. And she said, mom, I could feel it in my chest. And she said, it sounded like it was mad. And she said, you could hear it, the footsteps, because we had grass, but once you got closer to our driveway, it was like um, rocks. It was a rocky driveway. And she said, she could hear the thumping. And she said, this thing just seemed pissed off. It was making these sounds. And then she said, it started screaming. And she's like, I can't believe, because we had neighbors, like I said, now we have a whole family above us, a whole family. And then we have a whole family next yeah. to us. So I said, well, what did it sound like? And she said, imagine a man with a deep voice, but trying to scream as high pitched as they could. And she said, also, she's like, not such a total scream, but a growl too. So I instantly text, text my neighbor because they're right above us and me and her are really good friends. I said, did you hear anything? Did you hear that scream? They, everybody was oblivious to it. And my daughter is just like, I cannot believe you guys didn't hear it. And it stuck around for a while outside, but we just laid in bed, prayed. I didn't hear anything. And then that's when we, we did a move, which we were, we were happy about the move, but then that's when I had already just opened Pandora's box to dog man, because he's my fear. And now I don't have woods that I know. That's just little 600 acres with, you know, a farmer and, you know, there are roads out there. Now I'm on state game lands that go on for 85,000 acres plus like that's crazy yeah. so yeah there's been a lot of stuff I mean I could tell you about like I said I keep saying a lot of things but now it's present time um, things are still so happening what did you say oh no I was saying so so what happened next after after that that night of with your daughter and oh we we moved she was shaking we told each other about it we always kept because it was me and just my my kids 
we always kept each other informed as to what was going on. And now I was still doing physical therapy last year because I need two more operations on my leg, but I would wait for the medical van to pick me up and it would get me at four in the morning and I'm standing out open in the open, you know, pitch blackness with the, the tree line. I now know what's going on, like of some of the things I actually saw with myself. I'm, I'm looking, you know, my head spinning. Is that humanoid thing going to get me? Are, are the damn aliens, you know, is something going to get me out of the sky? Is something going to come out of the woods? Um, we've heard that growling, all different kinds of growling, different kinds of screaming, like I said, um, uh, these bizarre green lights. And we, we'd always check on our neighbors. We always knew there was an old man just out there by himself. He was very old. I was helping take care of him. He, he just passed away. Um, but we all had each other's backs out there. So if something happened, you know, we, we trusted each other. We were all good neighbors, but he wasn't home. He was, he was away at his cabin and we saw, we would look out of our front window and you could see his property. But like I said, it's, it's across the way, but the tree line is there and there's this old barn, this barn, shh, I mean, God, I have so many stories, this barn was run down now i'm talking a big farm barn where they kept tractors and now they didn't but on the back side of this um barn there was these big white hounds that you could rent hunters rented them but we would go mess around over there and we always wanted to go in this barn and like you could fall through and you could seriously either get killed or really really hurt you weren't allowed to but I wanted to just peek in because I knew the owl went in there. Yeah. So over at that area is where we saw these green lights. And but people aren't, there was nowhere, if you wanted to stop at my house and try and spy on me, impossible. Impossible. Your car would be out in the open with a field. There's no coverage. You couldn't sneak up on, on us is what I'm trying to say at all. You were totally out in the open we were all watching these lights and I called my kids. I was like, do you guys see this? Like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what's going on. It was these just green lights and there was a bunch, not at first, there was maybe six. And then we were watching them and they were moving. Um, but then more and more appeared. There was like over, it was such a cluster. It was probably over 30 of these green lights. And we watched this for a couple of minutes and then we, we just got scared. We would just shut the blinds, stay inside. You would hear weird scratching at our door and we would always try and label things out. Like we knew where we lived, we knew animals, but I think we were kind of just trying to tell ourselves that with some of it, cause I mean, some of it you, you could attribute to an animal, but we would always check um, the things in the sky. That was a lot. That was a lot that everybody different would, it would be different things you would see in the sky, like I said, but we, I personally would hear when I would be outside at night, because I used to like to feed the deer, um, you would hear, I would hear whistling, like the kind to get your attention, like, I can't whistle, like, come here. And I would look around and you could see it was like a flash, almost like a shadow. It was over in that area where that thing was around my husband and my brother and my son. It like, they said it moved so fast, but I could only see shadow and I could see something. It was like grayish white looking um, around this tree. And I know that area. I know how tall the trees are over there. I was petrified. I was down by that shed. So I had to go back up to my house. Um, it kept whistling like to come here, come here. And it was just watching. I went back in the house and I tried to play that off. And that's when my brother said, maybe it's the rake. And then we started just like, look, but I don't, I don't think it was the rake. <laughs> um, I think it was just some odd creature and that humanoid thing. My brother saw it, I think one more time after that. Cause then he moved out. Like nobody could handle it. It was really, really weird. Yeah. Um, but Oh, now, even now, like, where we moved to, I love animals. I told you that was, I love animals. My fear that just makes me, I'm just absolutely petrified of dog man. Like I am petrified of, of dog man. Um, 
where I move now, I live in a nice house, but behind my house is like a trailer park. And I mean, there's a whole bunch of cats, people abandoned. They just don't take care of them. So I made a little cat colony and right on the other side of this trailer park, if you stand on my back porch, you can see the tree line. There is an awesome trout trout stream over there. I go fishing over there, but it's woods and it's woods. So what I do now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not hurting them. It just makes me feel safer. I know how many cats there are. I feed them and I count all the time to make sure each of them are there because I feel like if one, if they keep, if they would vanish that it has to be dog man. Like I, I'm just like right now, I'm just my adrenaline. I'm really scared of dog man. Really, really scared. Yeah. And then now recently we've been hearing in the room I'm actually in right now, um, our house, the downstairs is where the water heater is. There's nothing upstairs besides like the shower, but if that shower or tub comes on, you'll hear it out in my room um, from the, the water heater. It'll click downstairs. So it doesn't click and there's nothing in the room I'm in that should be making any noise. Um, we keep it shut. The animals stay with me. Tr trust me, they're with me all the time. They're like little ducklings. They follow me everywhere. They stay with me. Um, they play into a lot of stuff too. I go by off the weird Got stuff it. they do. But it started last week once I started talking to you. We felt like, all right, new house. We know that where we lived, we, the people who lived here before, it's nothing to do with no hauntings. I live in a frat town. Like it was frat kids that lived here before us. Yeah. Um, so now when you're, no matter where you are in the house, I could always tell when my daughter is home because I'm in her room right now. I can hear her, you know, move. I'll know footsteps or if she gets off and on her bed because her bed's squeaky. But um, she hasn't been here and we've all heard it. Even when my son was cooking, I want to say it was yesterday, this big loud bang from her room. We ran upstairs thinking maybe the kitten got into my son's room and she likes to mess with um, Lucy, a, a snake my son has. His door was shut. The other door was shut. We're looking all around. Nothing fell, nothing at all, nothing. So we're all just like, what the hell is going on? It did it again today. But today you can, it sounds like footsteps too. In it, like if you're downstairs, it sounds sometimes like footsteps. Sometimes there's knocking, sometimes there's that thump, like it was so loud. We thought maybe the cat knocked down so, the snake's aquarium, but I mean, it, it, there was no damage. There was nothing, nothing at all. It was so weird. So I feel like when I talk about things, I feel like maybe, I feel like because I'm open to stuff, like I've always been open, even when I was younger, like I didn't shut everything out. I didn't talk about a lot of stuff though because of my upbringing. But from that accident, it made me change my life. It made me look at life a whole different way. Um, life is beautiful. Like, I got a second chance. Um, I just feel like because of all that, I feel like that's why activity, it, like, um, comes around us. Even my kids, like, it's always been around them. My daughter, she had a full-on conversation. We used, used to have to tell her, keep your bedroom light off. You have school in the morning. It's three o'clock. You cannot be up talking. She, and this went on for a couple of days. And then I asked her, I said, who are you talking to? The lady, she comes in, she talks about you all the time. And I'm, I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? Well, I want to say it was maybe two weeks later. It was sometime after she had said that I had my baby album, my baby album, because my oldest daughter needed a picture to take to school. And my youngest daughter said, that lady, she's the one who keeps me up. She's the one who keeps talking to me. It was my mother. And she never saw a picture of my mother ever. Like not the one who had passed the one, who, th that one, like she never saw her, never got to meet her. And it just blew my mind because we would constantly have to tell my youngest one, stop, stop the talking. You have to go to sleep. You got to keep these lights off. And she, it just, it gave me chills. Like she, there's no way she could have lied. She, I never showed her a picture of my mom because I, I really don't talk too much about my past with, with my kids because it, it was not a very good past. But I try and just pick up 
2012, this me, the old me, for a long time I chased that old one trying to replace myself. Like it took me a long time to look at myself in the mirror because of my scars. Yeah. Um, it took me a long time to accept my injuries. Um, even now, took me, it's still taking me time to like write correctly, read the right way. Um, I require sometimes a lot of help. So, but I feel like all that played into some of this. Like I really, really do. I really do. I agree. You have been through so much stuff. I mean, that's a lot of supernatural and paranormal activity. Is there fun. is a lot, a lot. Yeah. I had told you before um, when I went to my daughter's school, and that was right after I had gotten home. Mm -hmm. um, I was still in the wheelchair when I had to go. It was, it was like kids' day. They had to dress up like it was history or something. I want to say they were in like fifth grade, but okay. yeah, about fifth. But um, we had to go to the school, and she wanted to know because she did her whole project. I think she did hers on Harriet Tubman or something. But she was so proud, and I was determined. I was determined that I was going to see this no matter what. Get me in my wheelchair. Let's do this. So when we were there, now I had known all these kids prior because she went to the same school, so I knew all her friends. Um, we went, we were in the gymnasium and I was, you know, pushing myself around, looking at all the kids, different projects. And then there was the one, this one little girl. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I knew these kids. So I had known about this little girl a couple years and Aaron, my daughter and this girl were, were friends. The little girl could not communicate. Um, she, she had cerebral palsy, but really, really bad. She was in a wheelchair. She had, a, um, I want to say, I don't know what assistant who w went to school, like they made sure she got, um, she understood her. I don't want to say it the wrong way, but right. the little girl just couldn't talk like you and I, but I got to her um, project and her helper said, um, she did, I forget what the project was on. I can't be exact about that, but she said for her project, the little girl wanted to sing, um, I got the whole world in my hand. And she said, can she sing to you? And this whole gymnasium is like filled with parents. Everybody's looking at all these projects and the kids. So this little girl starts singing and the, the helper was singing with her, but I totally could feel this kid. Like she sung her little heart out, but I could feel her like she was talking to me in my soul this is like right after I said I got home from the hospital I knew things were different but um I could hear her and she talked perfectly and this her soul was like so pure and innocent and I could feel too how since she couldn't communicate how she felt about how others possibly like I don't know and I told her I was like you are the brightest beautiful little girl like she understood me and um, right before she ended, like, it was so intense. It was so intense. I didn't want to make a scene. I had, I had to leave. I had to walk out. I thought like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Something's going on. Did that really happen? And then that's when things picked up more. Um, when I would go to the store, random people, I think I told you about that. People who, if you would see me in like a, a t-shirt or something, I have a lot of tattoos. I stand out. I also used to have. You cut out. Cut out. Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, you're still good. Hold on. What about Perfect. right now? Yeah. Okay, so imagine that, like, you don't think an 80 year old lady is gonna, hey, can I hug you? You know, like, so that would catch me off guard, and these random. Uh, it was a lot of elderly people, people I didn't know. Um, anytime we used to go to the store, because that's when I would go, the kids would come with me. Um, people, elderly people would randomly just come up. And sh this one lady said, you're such an angel. Can I hug you? And I didn't like being touched, especially because I, I could feel others and I was scared. I would give off my feeling because I have a lot of sadness. But um, she hugged me, and it always made me think, 
all these elderly people that randomly, I'm talking a lot of people. That's why I stop going out. I only go out if I have to. I always feel yeah. like, did they, because I don't know their names. Did they, did they maybe later like pass away? Did I do something for them that, you know, I'll, I'll never know. It was just, they were so satisfied with by hugging me. It was just so weird. But it felt it felt good too. It was just odd, especially someone asking you like, "Can I touch you?" So that plays a lot into things. Like I'm still the same way. I still feel, um, I still feel certain things, and that's why like now we're getting ready as soon as the weather allows us. We're going back to Michelle, and usually I I go by that. Like when I mean a lot of people can kind of pick up on instinct, gut instinct if something is wrong, but usually I like to go by all right, I feel like this area will be a good area. This feels comfortable to me. And I always stick with that area. But I'm telling you, if I get one feeling of something unsure, I instantly, I almost had a total breakdown panic attack. I literally thought I was going to die on the Appalachian Trail. Like, I can't handle, like, we were so far out. And this was, like, too little that I know. Like, um, Dead Woman's Hollow, I brought that up before, but we were out that way, and we're, we're planning on, we're just, we, I don't really think you're allowed to go into the Appalachian Trail, I think there's certain camp areas you have to go, you can stay at shelters and stuff, but we decided, no, we're just going to hike in the Appalachian, which is up against, um, it goes through Michaux State Forest, and we're going to go in and we're just going to go off the trail. We're going to pop up our little tents that we got and we're going to have, we're going to stay all night. We're going to see if we can do this. Yeah. It, and that was before I even did research because I, I didn't even do any research on that area that we were in. And I like to do that just so I know, because now I don't think I stressed it before, like my whole fear, like I re really live in a, I'm scared all the time about going into the forest, but I want to go because it's so beautiful. But um, that area, like I said, has a lot of dogman activity. And when we were out there, I was fine. We had music playing. We were laughing. And then all of a sudden, even with the music playing, it was too dead silent for me. I'm talking, I felt maybe I was... I wasn't ready to be out there that I thought like it totally blew my mind that me of all people would be scared like that. It was too intimidating. Maybe it took us two trips, two trips to bring all of our stuff in. Listen, when I told everybody, I said, we have to go now pack up right now. They didn't question me. They, we grabbed everything. We grabbed so much stuff. I don't know how we walked out of there in one trip, but we were determined. It, it just, it was time to go. I didn't stick around out this way i i've told you before um there is a bunch of bigfoot but a, a lot of people know about bigfoot so bigfoot's not like a oh wow yeah. there are signs posted throughout that forest now have i ever seen a bigfoot no i'm sure they've been around now we've found structures there's structures all throughout some of these areas um now, I know a lot of kids like to build them, but you can tell what are built because it's not too far off the trail, but the ones that are way, way out, because we go off the trail. We usually take weird, um, steep horse trails where people take their horses sometimes. We just go yeah. off trail and we go looking to see what we can find. But out this area, I've tried talking to hunters because we run into them a lot. Really cool people out this way, but it's very intimidating and scary out this way. It's just so much forest. Um, cell phones don't work, but it's not going to stop me. Like I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going to these areas. We're going to keep, because I love the fish. Fishing's about to come. Like yeah. I'm just going to make sure this time, I guess I don't know how prepared I can be, but I just go by the instinct, like I said, I never ever go too far. They like I always usually stay, like my group will say, We're gonna go this way. Um, do you wanna comment? I always say no, I'm gonna stay here because it's like I'll stay where it's not so far from the car. But I don't always do that. Sometimes I do go far with them, but usually if it's a new area, I like to stay where the car is. Um, but then I went down that, I brought that up before the, the rabbit hole, like, 
out, th there's so much you can dig up and information out here. I just did not know. I feel like I jumped. I, I feel like I'm. You, you did a good job. You, you, you kind of went through a lot of what I was hoping you would get into. Um, if you, you want, we can go ahead and end right here. And then I ask you all these questions I have lined up from the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Because you probably still have more stories and what we can do is. We can get into all that. On. Yeah. And I'll have you list them uh, personally and then you'll, you'll be, we'll be able to start from there next, uh, next time as well. Yeah. So further questions. Um, this is starting from the very beginning of when you mm -hmm. were telling your story. Um, now, how long was you dead for? When you had um, your accident? And honestly, I really couldn't tell you. I would say um, at least a couple minutes. I know when, from what I was told, when the ambulance got there, they, um, I don't remember any of that. I don't even remember getting hit by the car. Um, yeah. but my mom told me why it was like weird. They protect you, but I want to say it was for a few minutes because it took the ambulance. I actually, I don't know if I'm allowed to even talk about this. I have still a lawyer because I'm ongoing with my medical bills are over $2 billion from all the surgeries. Mm -hmm. And it was a mess up with police. Um, they didn't do the correct job. Um, it's a, I don't know if I'm allowed to really. That's fine. You don't have to get into it. Just a. But it was for it was for quite some time. Um, they didn't have to bring me back. Um, I do know that I was. They had a breathing tube in me at one point because I remember once I woke up, I was like restrained, and they were explaining I had to cough for them to pull it out. Oh wow. But I was in that coma for. I was in a coma for a while. How long now? How long was you in that coma for? I want to say it was maybe nine days I was in the coma for and that's the thing when wherever I was um I knew that I had been I guess maybe as soon as the car hit me my mom was there but from that moment okay until whenever I woke up from the coma it literally felt like I was in that aura that place for maybe like five minutes three minutes it didn't feel long at all but I was mm -hmm. definitely somewhere for quite some time yeah I remember you saying that, that you, it was only like a couple minutes there, but it, mm -hmm. it was even longer outside. Yes. So, um, now, how long, let's see, how long has it been since your, how long has it been since your accident? Um, I had the accident, I want to say it's been nine or 10 years, it, February 3rd, two, 2012. Okay. So I want to say what, it just turned nine years, 10 years. Um, and then you you had your first ex well probably not your first experience but right as you were telling your story of this like shadow being um, yeah what time was it when that shadow person came I know it had to be in the middle of the night because that night um I had I was in a lot of pain I couldn't walk or anything like literally I had like um one of those potties right next to you like the elderly have like I had to lift myself with my arms. Um, that night, I was having a lot of pain. Um, I wasn't on pain medication, so I wasn't hallucinating. Um, but I would say after 1.30 in the morning, this thing had claws. 1.30 in the morning? It looked so weird. And I, I feel like it can was you, just... Can you describe it a little bit more? It was, all right, it was blacker than black. Like, I wish we had something like that dark, um, almost... Like the light, the light couldn't penetrate it. It was really weird. It was blacker than black. The TV was on. Um, Hold on, you're had, cutting out. You, you sound wise. Wait, can you wait? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was super super black, and it had red eyes, but the eyes had slits like a snake, like the, it, like a snake. It was like that. I didn't see any teeth. I didn't see a mouth um it tanned it had claws it was really weird but it was it wasn't like it wasn't like a person's arm it was i don't know if i could have like i couldn't see through it so i thinking it was just in whatever form it was in like it 
I don't know how to describe the hand. It's not, it wasn't like um, leathery or anything like that. It was just black, like you couldn't see through it. Um, when did you move into your old house and when did you leave? What year? Um, I moved into that house. I got, it was still 2012. Um, and that was right when I came home. It was almost summertime by the time I got out. So I want to say, we'll just say June maybe may because my brain it was just right after um it was a little bit after th they released me to that place because i needed to move like i said my body was outlined right outside of the old place so i'll, I'll just say late i'll just say june of 2012 and then we just moved last um at the very end it was almost april of last year okay. so we were there for what no, almost 10 years now, uh, we tell the audience, uh, if you feel comfortable enough, what city and state did all this 10 years of supernatural occur? Yeah, that would be Harrisburg, PA. But now when you say Harrisburg, people want to think of the city. I was okay. more towards the Hummelstown area. Um, it's very wooded. It's very country out there. Um, Dolphin County area. I would say Hummelstown. Hummelstown. Because my okay. neighbor's house... Like, my house was considered Dolphin County, and my neighbor, who was across the way, the old man, his was considered Hummelstown, a whole different township. But that's that's what I would say. Because when you say Harrisburg, people think of, like, inner city, and it wasn't. it's not the city. I wasn't in the city. Um, my next question is, what did that animal creature look like that you described sitting similar to what a dog would sit? It sat just like a dog, exactly like a dog. It... All right, so imagine, like I said, how it was sitting on its butt, um, but its front paws touching, just sitting. Now imagine a silhouette of a dog, but take the ears off. It was, it looked like that. Um, okay. It did not have a face. It did not have like eyes. It did not have teeth. Um, it was just total blackness, total blackness. So once we had gone in, I said we went in, it let out that scream a couple times, but I never, I was so close to touching it. It was, it felt like, I called it like, it made me really depressed. It made me really sad. I felt actually sad for it. That's how I felt sad. I also felt scared, but I felt more sad. Um, I don't know. I just feel like either, it's hard to say like what, because at that time I wasn't depressed. I, I don't feel like it was there to make me do anything um i just don't know it it felt like the nothingness that's all i can it that's what i called it nothingness like it was just so sad it was so lonely but you could still see still feel like the evil to it but me i felt it was just su such sadness it was so sad it was just really no, weird but it was definitely evil, evil. Three, it was evil um this is kind i don't of know why I, I don't know why i went creature. that close so yeah wait what did you say where was where was you at like where, um where was you at and where was this thing at and did your all right cousin or so that was with you did they see it all like could they also see it yes my my friend he saw it um now actually okay so i keep talking about that rocky nasty driveway uh, at the bottom is my house i'm standing on my patio at the bottom right by my sunflowers this thing was halfway up the driveway oh i forgot to tell you when we checked the next day in that spot in that direct spot where it was sitting everything was dead and nothing ever grew in that spot ever again you could see exactly where it was it was just a whole dead area it was um halfway up my driveway kind of on the concrete but kind of sitting where the grass was that's where the next day that's when we looked and um and i have pictures of it somewhere but that phone i don't even know where that phone is i never thought to keep it or anything but nothing ever grew there ever um mm -hmm. my friend did see it my friend saw it, everything i think he saw it first and then you saw it next i turned around and i saw it and then, I mean, I, I was scared, but like I said, I felt like after that experience, I felt like 
my mom has my back, like, I'm definitely not dying, like, I know my purpose, like, that thing's not going to kill me, because I know I'm going to be here, that's why I walked up to it, I honestly couldn't, I wanted to touch it, I was so close to touching it, um, but I didn't, I don't, I snapped out of it, and I turned around, and I went in the house with my friend, and then we started, I started praying, and it started screaming, and it only did it three times, but it was long screams, for more than, I would say, like, maybe five, five to seven seconds, and that was pretty long, that's why I was shocked, my neighbors, I'm like, how are they not hearing this, but then my one neighbor, they were a drunk, so I just thought maybe they were passed out, but, yeah. Uh, what time was it when you seen this creature? What time of it? What time of day that, was it? That wasn't super late. Um, that was we went outside around eleven thirty p.m. Um, and we were just checking out the stars. We sat out there for quite some time. We were just hanging out. It was so beautiful that night. Um, you could see everything. Like we were looking at some of the deer. So I would say between eleven thirty and twelve thirty. Okay. Um. What did all you the see? other stuff? That happened, it will happen anytime during daytime. It didn't matter. It will happen anytime. So are you still seeing things to the daytime? Um, yeah, we now over here I, I haven't re- over here I haven't when when we're outside hiking or something, that's when I wait for feeling. Um mm-hmm. I've only Um, but nothing has really felt like it doesn't feel like the old house. We haven't seen like all the other crazy stuff, not here. Um, I know that the the teenagers had seen something kind of weird in the summertime, but we're still trying to figure it out. Like, we don't know what it was. They were scared. But, um, as far as like hearing voices here, no, um, we haven't heard anything like that. Um, just that something falling it just started doing this i said since last week it's not every day it's just whenever but here feels like a lot different from the old place feels better how long of a distance did you move from your old place with all those things happening to now how how far distance is i moved about it's just under an hour i want to say an hour just under an hour away and even from when i grew up when i told you about my encounters that i had way back in the 80s that house where I grew up to where the house I moved into with the accident, literally, literally three minutes away, literally three minutes from the old neighborhood. So I was always in like that area. Um, now we're, now we're about an hour away, but now we're in all kinds of state game lands and mountains and stuff. So that's like a whole yeah. nother ball game. Yeah. Super weird. Oh, you move from one situation to a whole nother situation. Gosh. Yeah. Um, I know. Um, to... No, go ahead. Go I'm, I'm listening. You're fine. Go ahead and continue. Um, We're still trying to figure out what it was the teens saw over the summer. Um, I always talk about my back porch. We like to hang out on the back porch. That's where, like, it's more wooded and the trailer. I don't, we like the action. We, we laugh at the people over there. Like we know everybody, the cats come over, we watch them, whatever. But, um, they were out back and there's this big tree that's to the left. And I always feed the animals over there, but, um, there's also, it's in the trailer park. There's a light and just a normal street light. They were sitting out there. We didn't have our back porch light on. They said they were just sitting in the dark. Um, and when they looked up over this tree, they felt fear instantly. They were trying to figure out maybe what it was. They said it looked like a huge black garbage bag thing, but it had the shape of a witch. Like, but it it didn't look exactly like a witch. Um, they said it was super, super scary that it just hovered there. It was really big, they said though. Hovered right above there. And um, like I said, they were scared, but they had a, it it just went away. It wasn't a trash bag. It wasn't like a witch, but they said the shape of it reminded them of that. And they, they were, they didn't like that. They didn't like that. So 
I feel like things could be picking up again. I don't know. Super, super weird. That sounds really weird. I, and, and my son doesn't get scared easily. Like he said, they both said that they got the, um, they were both really, really scared. They were even scared to move. Cause I said, why don't you just come in the door? They were sitting down on the steps and they said that uh, the one, he, they were smoking a whole cigarette. So imagine it takes some time to smoke a whole cigarette. They said they yeah. just sat there, scared to move, and just watched this thing. And they said it literally just hovered there. And this isn't stuff like, my kids wouldn't just make this stuff up. This was something that they never saw before. We've been trying to figure out maybe what it is. I keep trying to look, but we just don't know. Um, and that, so when I go outside, because I don't like going outside at all at night. Mm -hmm. But I have dogs, and dogs got to go. So what I do now, because of my fear, I have a whole strategy. Like, you don't understand how I live my life now because of all this. When I go out my back door, I can see everything in front of me. And um, our porch has, like, a privacy. It's all, like, plywood there. Um, my neighbor, like, my neighbor put it up. They just put it up to block yeah. the sun. But I like it because it shields me. So when I go out the back door, that's the one we use. I put my back instantly against the back door. And I look up because we live in a, a, a duplex. So our house is pretty tall. Like I'm always looking out the windows where I'm at now, like really high up. So like I'll go out the back door and I put my back against the door all the time. I'll look up to make sure nothing is like on the roof. I'll look to my left to make sure nothing's up in that one big tree. And then next to my, on my right, I have pine trees. Like you don't understand what I'm always scared. A big head or something is going to pop out. Like, because, you know, creatures, they can be really loud, and some of them can be really quiet. And big ones, even that you think, you know, are super huge, they can be so quiet when they want to be. So, like, that's always a fear. And now I'm worried about that, like, weird hovering thing. Like, there's a lot of just weird stuff. Um, You spoke about something about when you would take your dog to the bus stop, and um, you were afraid of something there. Um, what's the, what was the... Well, I, I can't remember what, what creature it was you, you spoke about, but we, what was the distance between your home and that bus stop that you would carry? A um, it was almost a mile. And I called, I called the school. Oh, I threw a fit. They moved it. They moved. It. I said, I can't be walking down the street at, you know, in the morning when, with cars passing by. It was dangerous, first of all. Second of all, imagine your elementary kids, the, the school bus pulling up and I have machetes and guns. I had to walk my daughter because it was unsafe. Anything could have happened. It was pitch blackness. What there, there's all kinds of creatures out there, like the coyotes and stuff. You couldn't let a little kid walk. We just okay. lived that far out that that's what we had to do. So we they changed it a little bit to where you went up our driveway, crossed over into towards the track. We would always take the longest way because we would not go at that one scary spot. You could just feel. Uh uh, we would okay. avoid that at all costs, even during daytime. Now, um, do you wonder why all activity seems to just happen at nighttime? Um. See, no, I don't believe that anymore. Um. I feel like some of it. I feel like some of it. Yeah, it does. But um, with me, it's like all the time, anytime. So I'm used to it. I just mm -hmm. feel like um, I looked in. Like with that accident, I started reading. I told you, like I had to know, like because I, be I, I told you I became depressed. I actually lost a lot of friends, but because I wanted to, I just shut down. Um, I, I got out of a relationship because I wasn't the same person. Like so, I just needed to figure out, like what is going on. I'm like, and I just did. And that book, it really helped me. But then it also led me into the, my experiences what the hell yeah. was that black thing so i got this other book um called the devil and i just i like to read i like to get as much information well now i just hop on youtube or google stuff but the devil book explained a lot because all right Show them like, book. i oh, let me see it's called the devil it's it's crazy uh, and and we could you know people a lot of people don't want to talk about religion and you know, that's fine. I personally believe in God. I'm not going to go into what I think God is, but um, I know 
I feel that like okay my my real mom killed herself I feel like because you're 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 brought up and told if you kill yourself you go to hell I feel like that's not the case I feel like when you kill yourself you have to work levels that you're your sadness, like, they realize, wow, I really messed up, and they watch all of us suffer, and if you're really sorry, you'll get to where you, you need to be, and I believe that, because I saw my, my real mom there, she wasn't a very good person at all, like, at all, but she definitely didn't deserve to be in hell, and she wasn't, because I saw her, um, you know, I, I believe I was brought up Catholic, but now I'm talking strict Catholic, um, military style stuff all that but ever since my accident I feel like I'm very I've always been into like I don't even like to pick a flower it like they're so beautiful it deserves like it's a it's a being like I feel like everything has a reason to be here I'm very in tune with everything I pick up on everything like um I believe yes there's something after there's definitely something after here I can't tell everybody what it is I, I don't know if everybody's different but there is something after here I've talked to people who don't believe in any of it and it makes me sad it makes me really sad but then it makes me happy because one day they're actually really gonna get to go where they have to go but I don't believe personally in um I believe there are devils of all sorts demons of all sorts I don't just believe in one thing um I do believe in heaven and hell definitely um I do believe if you would just read this book it's so crazy like it because I was scared I wanted to try and find ways how do I keep myself safe and it it tells you stuff in this book like um we'll just say for example silver or they'll give you colors or certain things you can put around the house um so you know I did some of that but I feel like the more people are open to things even non-believers there's just so many creatures out here in this world. It's not just like God. Um, I believe definitely in aliens. Definitely. I believe in the, I mean, I've read about all kinds of stuff. I do think there's grays. I do think there's all that stuff. Um, I feel like everything. I also, all right. I don't really want to, I didn't really want to get into this, but because a lot of people, I can't make anybody believe and that's fine. Um, like this world is going to reset eventually. Like we have messed it up. We like, it makes me sad because this world, like it was given to us to take care of and we're not doing it. I'm not just talking with pollution. I'm talking, take care of the world, take care of each other, not just humans either. Take care of the creatures. Like it could all be so much better, but it's not, it's not. And I feel like, um, there, I, I, I've had encounters with like trap spirits where we had to tell them like, you know, you're dead. You have to, you have to cross over. I feel like maybe I'm just so in tune with certain things that I don't know. I don't know if the near death experience did this. Um, I've taught my kids like there, there's, you know, heaven and hell, there's God. They're brought up the same way. We just respect everything. Um, I don't go to church anymore. I feel like you can just talk to whoever you think is higher or a being or whatever I just pray that's what I do um and it doesn't matter like I don't know I could just get into so much stuff but that book if you just read about it I just can't figure out what that black thing was I've been trying to figure out what that black thing was I just don't know but there's just so many there's just so many other um like demons and stuff like and this well, we'll book, go ahead. I'm sorry. We'll definitely get into that. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead and uh, we'll say that for the next episode. Yeah. Um, I have just a couple more questions left. And then yeah, we'll go ahead. Up. Sure. Um, so what did the medium say to you? Um, it was, all right. I was on, um, it was because Jason had just died and I wasn't trying to accept that at all. Um. Well, when Kira had passed away, I actually did slit my wrists and my youngest daughter found me. She was two and she actually got me help. I was in the hospital. I recovered from that. Never tried to do that again. But when Jason had died, I thought, um, I thought of it, but 
I felt like I couldn't, I wasn't in tune with him. Like I didn't, I felt like, all right, well, I have this gift. Like, why hasn't he come to me? So anyway, it just so happened that she was going to show up on this, um, this uh, radio, this radio station. And I had talked to her prior just briefly. And um, when we were on the radio station, she said to me, Jason said that you were right, that he didn't want to come back and that this place is way better than earth. And that's exactly what I told Jason. And this lady had no way of knowing. And she said, um, but you already knew that. And she said, because she, she was explaining to me, I mean, it, I don't know how people would really think into it. When someone just dies, they don't, you can't always just communicate. They have to get the energy. So he was, I want to say he was maybe dead a week or two, but she did get through. And she described exactly what he on without even knowing when she said jeans and the gray shirt, I just knew because that's like, that's the last thing. And he just kept repeating that I was right, that he would never come back to earth, even if he had the chance and he had kids and it was just really crazy to hear. And she said, honey, you have a gift too. And she's like, but you already knew that. And then I felt kind of weird that she said that because we're live on the radio. My friends knew I was getting on the air and I didn't really want some of that out. So it, it was it was very shocking, but yet not shocking because I kind of already knew it was just weird hearing it from, from her because she has the ability to talk to them. Like I haven't talked to anybody, only my mom. And then when I first got the accident, now it's just like I pick up on the feelings and stuff. Yeah, I've heard that when people have near-death experiences, they do come back with gifts. Um, I had another person come on, and they told her story, and all of a sudden, like, they also could see pretty much spirits and stuff, and they're always trying to mm -hmm. find help. It's just, it's so crazy, and it, it's like you're almost like an antenna, so you attract all the stuff, you yep. know? Yep, um, that's what I just told my kids to last night. I said, listen, because my son's girlfriend, she now is experiencing it. She like she never not believed, but um, I always just tell them just, you know, because sometimes I, I learned at sometimes I could shut it off. It just depends, but um, it depends who I'm around. Um, but I just tell them, I feel like it's because we're in tune with them. I said, just try and block it out or ignore it. We ignore it to, as much as we can until like, when you hear something that loud, we all go right to each other and we're like, did you guys hear that? And everybody's like, yeah, we'll just nothing. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. I feel like possibly, possibly, I really don't know. It's just different because my kids have that same gift and nothing has happened to them. Like they've never been through, you know, um, experiences like I have. I was going to say that was going to be one of my other questions was about your mm -hmm. daughter here in just a second. Um, but um, why was the shit? Why is the shed a hot spot? Do you know? Do you know why? Like everything seemed to be towards the shed at your last house. Um, I feel All like I feel like behind the shed, yeah, because there was a trail back there. There's like um, there was one of the trails. I feel like, and a lot of um, oh, what's the word? Um, paths from the animals. Um, I don't know. I feel like it came up from down at the creek I don't know I just feel like so, that was just the area I don't know why they came out that way maybe it was because at my house it was a little bit more surrounded with some trees not so so open I feel like they could have coverage of some sort that's what I feel like but I don't know but it wasn't always just that area it was everywhere because I, I was just so curious because of the whole hearing the dog barking or or howling or something towards the shed and it's we going. always used to say the shed we saw on top of that shed I forgot to bring that up too it's just a lot but one night it was um I, it was it was pretty late but we we would always go outside and we were just messing around right outside the door I think I was smoking a cigarette but um we looked up to the edge of the shed. I think my daughter saw it and she's like, what is that on top of the shed? What is that? It looked, um, it wasn't an owl, but it had a weird, it was like a dark shape. I don't know. I didn't see a face. You could see a shape though. We went inside. We didn't stick around to look. We didn't investigate. I did look back out. We took a spotlight and nothing was there, but that was at the shed too. 
I don't know. The shed was a weird area. It was it was weird. Um, you now about your daughter because she sees all these things that you can see. So do you think she was born with these gifts to see these things, or how did how is she seeing the same thing as you? But neighbors can't even see or hear anything. Um, that's a hard one. I think either well, actually, with um both my daughters, like at times even when we're far apart, we just know, um, sorry, I was just reading that. Um, I can pick up on things. It's, it's very odd when I'm really in tune with somebody like my people that I really care about, same with them, both my daughters, like we know we can finish sentences sometimes just like yesterday. My two girls did it to each other. It was the craziest thing. We do it all the time though. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking maybe they're, they're born with it because months back, I want to say last, whenever my granddaughter was maybe seven months old, my daughter had my granddaughter somewhere. I, I can't think of it. I'll have to ask her where, but there was people. And this lady said, um, she said, your daughter, I want to, I want to, I want to be a hundred percent on this. I might have to tell you the next time I'll ask Allison, my granddaughter, they called her, I want to say the rainbow child. They said she. It, this lady, I think, was some kind of psychic. She said, this baby has, um, I, oh, I, I have to ask my oldest daughter what the name was, because there's different names. And I, I know, I think I'm this, I don't want to say rainbow. I'm going to find out for you, and I'll let you know. But she okay. said that she knew it was passed with me and my daughters and my granddaughter. It's weird. And all of okay. us pretty much have the same eye color, too, which we look into that, so we have hazel eyes it's very weird that so that daughter that can see those things did you have her after your accident no i had oh, um the youngest one was eight years old and it was weird too because that night when i left she mm -hmm. said mommy no no she was always attached to me give me your i'll never forget it give me your cherry pepsi because i had just bought it she said by the time you get back i'll have this open and we can drink it she said let me hold your cherry pepsi um but she even said she knew I talked to her. She said she knew instantly. And my best friend, too, it was weird. They said they felt no. Okay, wait. They said that they had got a sick feeling and they instantly knew something was wrong because my youngest had come out um, of the house with my best friend. They saw the lights. And I believe my daughter got very traumatized because at Okay, wait, at the road where I was just hit, literally, I had everything I had on, I was like totally obliterated. I was all over the road. My jacket, my hat, and every, I was so superstitious. That freaking day, I was so mad because I have a earring that I wear at the top. I couldn't find my dragonfly earring. Yeah. And I always, it was just like certain good luck stuff, but Erilyn knew, shoot, I said her name, my youngest daughter knew something was wrong. She came out with everybody. She, I don't think she saw me, but she mm -hmm. saw parts of, of me. My jacket was totally obliterated, my hat, um, my clothes, even my tongue ring. Like I was all over the road. So she was super traumatized about that. And she went through a very hard time. Um, she always felt like she couldn't go to friends' houses because if she left and couldn't see me, that I would die, that I would get killed. Because we, it was just such a, she was eight at the time. And then my little boy, but I had forgotten to bring up about a year after my accident, I started walking on my own. So I do walk now. I forgot to bring that up. I do walk. It just takes time. But yeah, I feel like um my kids have this energy. I feel like I feel like we were born with something and I feel like they saved me that night that I got hit because it just wasn't my time. And they, if I would have died, they wouldn't have had anybody to raise them. My parents were dead. Their dads weren't in the picture. They didn't care at that time. They would have literally had nobody. And I don't know. I just am so grateful that I didn't die. And I'm so glad I got a second chance. But um, yeah, I think all of it plays into something. It's just so hard to, to know exactly. Yeah. Well, you have definitely lived through an amazing story. Uh, you yeah. have a lot more to tell, that's for yeah. sure.
Um, I think I'll end my questions right there. As okay. I have a bunch more, but I can always ask them when we do our next episode as well. I want oh, to yeah. try to piece together the two videos since I had a little bit of bad luck of cutting in and out of it, you know? You know what um, I'm waiting on? I'm waiting on one of my adventures here out in the woods. And um, if something happens, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to video you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Video That's you. a good idea. <laughs> I can't wait to show everybody more. more. I'm going to try and get what I can get, like, to show yeah. people there's a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah, anytime you you video everything, take pictures of everything. Yeah, and that's because... weird too, because I do I do believe certain things just aren't meant to be captured, even when they're right in front of you. Um, mm -hmm. or it's just it's just crazy some of it. I'm gonna get what I can get, definitely. Please, I I, I would appreciate it so much. <laughs> I feel like if we could show these things, people would understand and believe it more as well. You know. But... Oh yeah. It's just like when something happens like that, like them just out smoking at nighttime, you know, it's like, even though we have our phones, it's like, literally, you're so scared. You are not thinking about, oh, let me video this, you know, yeah. but now I try and be ready. Just like, you know, um, I've heard if you have a phone, I've heard so many stories, but if you have a cell phone with you and you have an encounter, we'll just use, for example, my fear, dog man, that they'll leave you alone or go away. Now, granted, I've heard stories where they get really pissed off and they'll come at you. So yeah. it's just like, who really has that phone? Now I do keep it by me, but it doesn't always mean that I'm going to pull it out because yeah. I'll be so scared. <laughs> yeah. We don't want them thinking it's a weapon or something and try to be revengeful. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. All right, Kat. Well, I thank you for coming on and sharing thank your you. story. And audience, we will be having her back once again so we can get the rest of her story. Um, we had a little bit of uh, internet difficulties. That's why we had to separate this uh, part one into two parts. So I'm going to try to figure out how to fix that. But she has many more stories. She's been through so many different things. And I'd love to have her back on. If you guys have any questions, you can message the, on the video. You can even message the profile she's using um, to do her video. And I just want to thank everybody for coming on. And thank you, Kat, for sharing. Thank you. And is there anything you want to say to the audience or anything before we end the um, video? No, I just feel like it, it was a little jumpy, me jumping around. It was just so many different things in years that I'm trying to just, you know, collaborate together. But yeah. I'm definitely getting more comfortable. I had a lot of anxiety talking about this, but I actually am feeling better. And if anybody does have questions that I feel like then I could answer more and give maybe more information. Yeah, that would be great. That's why I try to ask as many questions as I can mm -hmm. to fill in spots. But I know even if it's you're jumping around, you're still getting your story out there. Definitely. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I hope you guys all have a great evening and I'll see you guys all later. Thank you. Kat. You too. Thank you. Bye bye.